Well, good morning. morning. Can always depend on my sister <laughs> to be obnoxious, and I don't know exactly where she learned that from. Sure. But I'm fairly certain it was from me. This morning is going to be a little bit different, and I know that you guys have been in a series uh, concerning what? What is it? What's been like the main thing? Fam, familia, families, right? So, I mean, I guess maybe we're a little bit on topic. I mean, we're talking about our church family. Uh, and then for those of you that you know, have never really spent a whole lot of time with me, I'm the administrative pastor down in Sebring, Florida. And my job is to make sure that the three churches in Sebring, Lakeland, and Ocala are equipped. And I work a lot with the pastors there and also the congregation there in Sebring. Just full confession, and those that have heard me preach before, I'm not the best preacher, right? I like small groups, I like relationship, I like a little bit more of interaction, but I digress. This morning, we're sort of wrapping up a series in Sebring that is going over our vision statement and what that means for our three churches. So you guys are going to get the, well, you get one of them. Okay, you're gonna get the end. This is the this is what this is what we're going to be teaching in Sebring uh, next week. But it really starts with an open letter that I put together, uh, so that way, just to give you a little bit of a historical context, because I've been a part of this for a little bit longer than most of you. Well, I guess I've been, I guess all of you except you. You've been with me the whole time, babe. Opens up with a letter. It says, "Church family, have you ever?" pondered on the question, God, what are you doing? Over the past 10 plus years, I have asked that question numerous times. It has been an incredible journey to see what he is doing through a small body of believers here in central Florida. It started about 12 years ago in Sebring that our elders, along with Pastor Randy Smith and I, began to talk about the potential of, of planting a church. We were imagining, because uh, I'm in Highlands County, I was imagining Avon Park or Lake Placid, which is just south and, and north of us, or, or perhaps across town you know, in, in another area of Sebring. We had no idea what God was doing, but trusted that the Holy Spirit was at work. Just after we began to converse about that, two different things happened. First, I attended a, a leadership forum at Southeastern University. In, uh, in Lakeland, Florida, and heard Jack Welch. I don't know if anybody knows Jack Welch, but he was the former CEO of GE. And he was speaking about how, how businesses could posture themselves to, you know, to take over other businesses that weren't performing well. And afterward, during the Q&A session of this, someone asked, how could that pertain to a church? His response being that he, he was not a, a Christ follower was, I have no idea. Well, that was incredibly helpful, Jack. I began to ponder, though, and little did I know that the Holy Spirit was at work. The second thing that happened was our fellowship coordinator uh, called Pastor Randy, who was in Sebring at the time, and uh, his name was uh, Tom Avey, uh, and asked if we could step into a situation that was occurring here in Ocala. See, a once highly functioning church body was on the, on the verge, this, this church body was on the verge of selling the entire property to a funeral home. This, I mean, I don't know about you, but I love, last time I was up here, I came on a Tuesday and I mowed about seven acres of this property and I had a, a blast doing it. It is 10 beautiful acres. I mean, just put me on that zero turn mower out there and I went to town with my earbuds in and just, you know, sang. I think your neighbors probably think I'm crazy because I was singing at the top of my lungs, mowing the lawn, you know, but anyway. But we had just played witness, uh, in the, our congregation in Sebring and other churches, just played witness to uh, a number of churches, way too many churches in Florida, closing their doors and doing such things like selling their property to funeral homes or, or to other churches. And this was happening across the state, flagship churches, Places like Orlando, places like Fort Lauderdale, it was, it, was, it was in our hearts a little bit devastating. And our hearts were frustrated, and again, the Holy Spirit was at 
work. Long story short, our church planning conversation um, transformed into, you know, that quote unquote taking over not only our church in Ocala, but five years later, our church in Lakeland as well. Until the past year, our hopes, dreams, and aspirations were to establish teams back into both Ocala and Lakeland, build them, build them up to be you know, self-sustaining, everybody can take care of themselves, and then release them back to this word called autonomy. Anybody know what autonomy is? Basically, you do it on your own, right? No guidance, no help, no working in conjunction. But the Holy Spirit has continued his work. Over the past 10 years, the elders, myself, and each of our location pastors have been dreaming, moving toward the idea that we are stronger together. We've been working on a plan and strategy to, to work with one another to build his church in three cities in central Florida. And our new hopes, dreams, and aspirations is to not only build his churches in these places, but to work with one another to plant or, or maybe even revitalize more churches across our mission field called Florida. We continue to ask that question, though, God, what are you doing and we're excited to see how he has faithfully answered that question. Our collective vision, I'm not exactly sure if Pastor Michael has went over these lately. They're sort of new. But our collective vision, I was really hoping to have the PowerPoint so you can visualize it. But I'm sure those will be up soon. Is we long to see the gospel of Jesus transform Florida by working together as three church families sharing one mission. We hope to clearly redefine Jesus in the hearts and minds of our neighbors, equipping them to deepen their commitment to follow him. The third one is we call and develop tomorrow's shepherds and leaders today. Our collective mission, of which I do know that you guys have heard this time and time and time again, is to invite our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus. And before we dive into our passage this morning, I'd like to invite you to ask a, the, the, a follow-up question to like that, God, what are you doing? But the follow-up question is, God, how can I be a part of what you're doing? Will you pray with me? Lord, I pray for your people this morning. As we digest not only your word in Ecclesiastes, but, but what you're doing here in our midst, what you're doing with three different churches, three different sets of people, but one body of Christ and how we can work together, Lord. And I pray, I pray fervently that we all are, are trying to respond to that, God, how can I be a part of what you're doing? Because you're doing something special and to be used by the King is just humbling. Lord, we serve you today. We worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to unpack Ecclesiastes, we're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Familiar verses, but we're going to try to unpack that in a way that makes sense not only to his word, but what we're experiencing here in Ocala and Sebring and in Lakeland. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9. Our mission to reach our neighbors here in Ocala, as well as our mission to work collectively with our churches in Sebring and Lakeland, it's, 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 a, it's a familiar passage this morning written by King Solomon. All right, yeah, I guess he was an incredibly uh, wise man according to 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. And it says this, Ecclesiastes 4, starting in verse 9, two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their toil, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and is not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. The first point that I want to make uh, in that is from verse 9, is that we benefit greatly 
by being stronger together, right there in verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. I don't know about you, but I like a good payoff. Tampa Bay Rays had a good payoff. They're going to the World Series. Anybody care about that? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Florida. Florida teams are dominating this year. Anyway, does everyone not know what ROI means? ROI, all right, Re- Re- well, return on investment, but, you know, or interest, whatever you want to say, all right, when we give generously of our time, talent, and treasure, it's always nice to get a return on it, I don't know about you, but I don't have enough energy to expend to not get something back for it, right, I want a payoff, I like a payoff, as the church, a return on investment happens when our neighbors respond positively to our, in, to our invitation to, to meet and follow Jesus. What reward or benefit are we looking to attain by being stronger together as three churches? First and foremost, we hope to see that people's lives are transformed by the, by the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Working together allows us to share more resources, ideas, and even people to accomplish these goals. You guys have been uh, a benefactor of people. Well, maybe. I mean, you, I think you're a blessing, Sarah. But that was, a, that was a hard loss for us when Sebring, when Ryan and Sarah said that they were going to be moving from there to here. I miss my sister so much. Our family in Sebring has invested since 2013, all right, seven years, well over a quarter of a million dollars toward our works here in Ocala and Lakeland. I don't know about you, but a quarter of a million dollars is a lot of money to me. I, that was a little fun fact that I sent our leadership this week, just doing a little bit of math, going, it was actually $266,000 that... Our, gener- our generous people in Sebring have given toward what we're doing in these campuses. That blew my mind. And my thing is just think what God can do if each of our families are fully functioning, fully self-sustaining, and we could triple that number and plant more churches or come alongside of other churches to help lift them up. God has been so good. His people have been so generous and patient in understanding of how important it is to build churches, not close churches. Pastor Benj is sharing this uh, today in Sebring as well, but he says the, the United States has more than 180 million unchurched people, making it the, the third largest mission field in the English-speaking world and fifth largest in the world. That's Astounding. 180 million unchurched people in the U.S. I'm excited about what God can do through his people in three counties in Florida. To make an impact, just to make at least a small dent in that 180 million. No one else is going to do it. The church, our church, which means people has to be able to rise up to the challenge. I'm so thankful for the blessing of having more brothers and sisters to actually pull off this challenge. Amen? You guys, you, you guys are a part of his church, and we can do some incredible things, especially together over the last year. As we've shifted our, our mindset of how we're working together, it's been incredible to work with Pastor Michael. Pastor Ben and Pastor Oren to dream, to to collectively work on a plan and develop a a vision for our future here in Ocala, Sebring, and Lakeland. And furthermore, thanking God for what he has already done. In Sebring, we're celebrating 40 years of being there as a church body. That's been awesome. And dreaming of what we can all do together and to be on the same page. And I am anticipating... An ROI, you guys learned something new today, ROI, a return on investment. I'm anticipating the ROI and expect it to be God-sized, all right? God-sized is not small, it's huge. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. We benefit greatly by being stronger together, Ecclesiastes 4.9 says. 
The second point is in verse 10. We are stronger together when we have each other's back. It says in verse 10, For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. I mean, I think we all get that it's vital. It's a vital function uh, to the unity to have each other's back, right? Like, in order to be a unified church, we have to have each other's back, right? Right? I just ask that we're all open and honest with our communication. In order to make this whole thing work, uh, we we really can't afford to leave anybody behind. I'm I'm asking personally, if you have questions, concerns, ideas, don't hesitate to ask me. Ask Pastor Michael. Ask the leadership, like, what is going on? How can we be a part of it? And got to be honest with you, we're excited when people ask us that. Because we've put a lot of work into it. So when someone says, hey, what are we doing? Like, it's like, oh, you care about what we've been working on. I'm excited about that. We've spent much time in prayer and a lot of meetings to get us where we are today. So sharing the product of our efforts is actually an encouragement. But I've been in church most of my life. I've been in vocational ministry for 20 years and inevitably there are some who don't understand what leadership is doing or, or, or don't like the direction of uh, where the church is heading. And then what happens if you don't like where the church is heading? Well, we start to grumble. Sometimes we even start to gossip, right? Trust equity diminishes and we can't afford that. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 12, But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. We're in this together. We're not only in 2020 together. We're not only in this coronavirus thing together. We're in this like vision for where we're going as three churches in central Florida to make an impact on 180 million unchurched people in our country. I'm confident that we'll make mistakes along the way. I don't know about you. I make a lot of mistakes. Anybody else? Anybody else make mistakes? No? Perfect people. Pastor Michael, if you're watching, you have perfect people, except Sarah. I think Sarah is the only one. Okay, okay. (laughs) I'm also confident that our church families have the grace and love needed. To work through whatever situations come up. And actually what the verse says is lift each other up, not tear each other down. Asking that question earlier, God, how can I be a part of what you're doing will be key to our success here. Ways to engage this, sort of putting feet on it for you as the person just that's part of the family and engaged in ministry here, pray for our churches. Not only pray for what's happening here in Ocala. And I know that it's a lot easier for you to pray for your neighborhoods here in Ocala, but I'm just going to tell you, I got just as many lost neighbors in Sebring and Avon Park than you do here, right? And Lakeland is Polk County. I mean, they got Grady Judd and all, but there's still a whole slew of lost people that need to hear the love of Jesus. Second thing is we can pray for our leaders, pray for each other, pray for our neighbors. Get involved or or stay involved if you're actively involved here on mission. Participate in mission. Worship. Continue to participate in worship. Small groups, when those things get back up and running again, get involved with those as well. Share your ideas. And most of all, share Jesus, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. We are stronger together when we have each other's back. Amen? The third point there in verse 11 is that we ignite our neighborhoods by being stronger together. It says, again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm Alone. All right, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we going to talk about spooning this morning? Okay, we're going to, no, okay, no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to talk about keeping each other warm. 
Uh, cuddling, all right? I'm not going to dwell on the cuddles, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the imagery of how we can ignite our neighborhoods together. The verse gives us, a, uh, gives us an example of how two people coming together creates heat. Anybody experienced this before? Like, you know, we see this on TV, on those, you know, on those uh, nature shows when they're out in the middle of nowhere and it gets cold at night, right? I am pumped to see what's in store for our churches as we come together even more. Each church is amongst a neighborhood of people that contains some people who know Jesus, and it also contains a whole lot of people who don't know Jesus. And when I refer to the church, I'm not talking about three buildings that we have in three different counties. It's strewn about Marion County and Polk County, Highlands County, are Jesus' church, his people. Our neighborhoods are where we live, where we eat, where we work, anywhere that we interact with people. And in all of those places, there are some people who know Jesus, and there's a slew of people who don't know the name of Jesus. We're working together, developing plans to better equip each one of the bodies in all of those places to to make a bigger impact on neighborhoods with the gospel. We're working toward uh, developing plans to better equip you, the saints, to do the work of the ministry. It's not Pastor Michael's job to do everything around here. It is up to him to equip the saints for you, body, to do the work of the ministry. If you're not chipping in, I'm telling you from the guy that don't have a dog in the fight to chip in and help what's happening here in Ocala. We want each person that walks through these doors to experience Jesus in a real, personal way that impacts their life, not just today. We want to be able to impact their life forever. Here's the difference between where we've been and where we're headed. For the past 11 years, for the most part, there's been a a one-way transference, right? Sebring to Ocala or Sebring to to Lakeland. We've given of people, we've given of finances. Not that it was bad, it was the decisions that we made, but, but heeding to where we felt the Holy Spirit leading was, it, was it, it wasn't the best direction. In order to create more of an impact, to ignite our neighborhoods even more powerfully, we began to have a two-way transference, or not only a two-way, but a, but a three-way, right? Us to Seabird. Ocala to Sebring, Sebring to Ocala, Ocala to Lakeland, Lakeland goes around, right? We should be able to impact each other's lives. We have already seen some incredible benefits of this. It has really only been on the leadership level, and the question is how much more of an impact will this have if everybody from here in three different counties is on the same page at the same time? I don't know about you, but isn't, wouldn't it be nice if we were all on the same page at the same time? Like we all know the direction that we're going, working in harmony together. Ecclesiastes 4, 11 says, Again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? We ignite our neighborhoods by being stronger together. The fourth, the last point, is in verse 12, we are stronger together with the Holy Spirit. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. It says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We can do a lot together. But the inclusion of the Holy Spirit, we can do some significant Things. When God gets involved in something, when, it, when, when he is uh, you know, impacting the lives of people with us, I say look out because he's on the move. As people, we can be stronger together, but there are limits. I don't know about you, but you're, I'm limited. Are you limited in what you can do? Like you only have so much energy in the day. You only have so much money in your bank account, Right? Sometimes we run into conflict. We only have so much time. See, including the Holy Spirit taps into a limitless source. God is limitless in his capacity of love and unity. He has, he has an unlimited amount of time. Why? Because, well, you know, God doesn't live in time, so he has an unlimited amount of it. He never runs out of energy, thank the Lord, because I know I keep him busy. 
He knows everything. Which, if you ponder that one thing, is that not scary? He knows everything. In a writing by David Hawking, he says, Why is God so great that it is impossible to know what he knows? And the answer is that not one single person who has been created by God has ever been given the capacity of God himself. We are all limited in our knowledge, but he is not. He knows all things from beginning to end. Anything that has ever happened in your life or in mind, the Bible says that God knows it all. He knows our weaknesses better than we do. He knows what sin has been in our lives or will be. He knows what tragedies will come. He knows that sorrows we bear and what pains and hurts are ours. And because we do not understand that doctrine, we quickly move to the belief that God somehow doesn't care. And yet over and over again, he says he cares. He knows and he cares He will not do it like you think, but he will do what is right. And he will do it for his glory and his honor, and he asks us to trust him. But we want to be in charge. We want to be the captain of our own fate, the the master of our own destiny. We want to grab hold of it and make the decision. And God says, you will never know what I know, ever. I thought those were good words for this God that knows everything. The psalmist in in Psalm 139 says this. Again, it's a familiar psalm. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind me and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me. When as yet there was none of them, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they would be more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. O that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them. My enemies search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. He knows every part of you because he, he formed you. He knows what every single minute of every single day of your life is going to be like. And that is humbling. In order for us to expect any kind of success in what we're doing together, we need to include the Lord in all we do. And if you know Pastor Michael or Pastor Ben or or Pastor Oren like I do, they need a lot of help. Just going to point that out, right? And I know that they can say amen to that. It says, And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. We are stronger together when we work with the Holy Spirit. 
The church in Sebring has been going, like I said, for 40 years, and I have been a part of what um, I've been a part of that work for 14 of those years. 11 of those, I've been a part of what's going on here in Ocala, five in Lakeland. There have been, over the last 14 years, I can just say and attest to this, there have been a lot of challenges. But I've also been playing witness to a lot of amazing works of God. And i got to be honest with you. There has not been a time in the last 14 years that I am nearly as stoked about where we're going as a church. I'm excited and hope that every one of you are just as much excited as we embark on this journey. Embracing the hope that you and me and everybody else can be stronger together while inviting our neighbors to meet and follow Jesus. Don't forget that question, right? God, what are you doing? But also, how, how can I be a part of this? What can I do to be a part of this? And I pray that each, each one of you asks that question before the Holy Spirit. God, all right, there's a, there's a lot to do, not only in this church, but in three different counties. How can I be a part of that? Lord, Thank you just for the ability to, to process your word, to be able to process it with your people. It's a tall order. But you, you have given us a challenge. You sat with a group of men and gave them the great commission that we're all going to be saying in a few minutes. And you set this world on fire in the name of Jesus. You have, <laughs> you have impacted the lives of millions and millions by the power of your good name. Lord, I pray for this body. I pray, Lord, that we can fervently lay our lives before you and ask the question, how, how am I supposed to be a part of this plan? How can I get involved? How can I best reach my neighbors to meet and follow Jesus? How can I be a blessing to others in this church? How can I be a blessing to Pastor Michael? How can I see you do amazing things through me? Lord, we put ourselves at your feet. There is no time to waste. Our neighbors need to know who you are <laughs> And to be able to see Jesus. Lord, thanks again for this morning. Thanks again for the power of your word. Thanks again for that ability to just to be able to process how we can be stronger together. In Jesus' name. Amen.